What an incredible posture of humility David displays in in this psalm. And he he as a king praises a king who he knows to be great. In Psalm 145, in verse 3, it says, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Let me read it one more time. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Obviously, David was enamored by the greatness of God. You know, if we ever meet a person and uh, who we consider to be great, most of us would be enamored by some quality of that person. It's not, it's not about uh, just their good looks. Because if that was so, I would have stood a chance, you know, but, but it's, it's not just that. You're really enamored by more about a person than just their looks. So what is it about God that makes him truly great? When David wrote this psalm, what was it about God that really truly makes him great? But I believe that God is not only great, I really believe with all my heart that he's the greatest. There's nothing, no one that compares to who God is. I believe no one and nothing comes even close or equals who God is. God is unparalleled, unmatched and always will be. And the reason I can so confidently believe that God is great and that he is the greatest, the reason I believe that is first of all, because of God's great works. That's the first reason why I believe that God is great. You see, David started by writing out in verse 3, he says, Great is the Lord and worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. David recognized the greatness of God. He recognized his great works, and so he begins to praise God. He says, great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. You know, we walk into a place like this and we begin to praise one another. But they, as great as that is, there's nothing greater than praising God for who he is, for what he has done. It says, one generation will commend your works to another. What he's saying is, this doesn't mean that, okay, if we don't tell the next generation, they would forget. It's really not possible to forget what God has done. You know, as much as we try, as intelligent as we are, doesn't matter how many degrees you might have acquired. You know, I've, I, over my lifetime, I've spoken with intelligent people. I'm, I'm not that intelligent, but I have had the opportunity to speak to great men of God, intelligent MIT graduates, you know, all these high-flying scientists and all of that. And with everybody I've talked to, at the end of the day, nobody has really been able to wrap their heads around how great our God is. No one. The philosophers of this age, the Richard Dawkins and all of these people, nobody has ever been able to really wrap their heads around how great our God is. So in this journey of embarking to know God, I hope that we can have an understanding 
of that greatness. God reveals how great he is by the work he has done. Everything is accomplished. He spoke and everything came into being. That's how great he is just by the power of his word. He spoke and all things came into being. David says, everything they, in verse 6, they will tell of the power of your awesome works and I will proclaim your great deeds. You know, the famous English preacher, John Wesley, he captured the same moment and he, he, he puts it this way. He says, give me a worm that can understand a man and I will give you a man who can understand God. Think about it. How difficult it would be for a worm to understand a man. And he says, I will give you a man who can understand God. That's how awesome our God is. We can't just fully grasp it as much as I wish. That's why anybody who has walked with God, the Apostle Paul, after so many years of walking with God, he begins to say that I would know you in the power of your resurrection. God, that I could only know you more. The reason we've done a series like this is because we as a people, we need to know God more. We can never come to a point in our relationship with God where we can say, I know God enough. Oh God, I know everything there is to know about you. No, he's so great. There's so much more we can know about God. You know, if you put all the search engines of this world together, all the Googles and everything else, I don't think that they can even all put together can really capture how great God is and the works he has done. The second reason I can so confidently declare that God is great is because of God's great goodness. You know, two weeks ago, I, I preached on the goodness of God, so I'm not going to go so much in depth. The truth is that there are, there are great people, but it's not necessarily that all of them are good. That's the difference. You know, you may admire a great politician, and you may, they may have done some good, great things and all of that, and you would say, oh, they're great. You know, they've done so much good. But just wait for a little while, because time reveals all things. And after a while, some scams come up, and this comes up, and all the evil begins to surface. And then you realize, was that person really good? Somebody I considered to be great, were they really great? Because of what begins to come out of the closet. But it's not true with God. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. God is good and he does good. That's the beauty of our God. When we think about the goodness of God, God is good and he does good. His motives and character and actions match. That's our God. Motives, character, and action, they all match. And that's why David, in, in verse 7, he says, They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. I hope we as a people celebrate God's abundant goodness. You know, God's abundant goodness is not just about the possessions you may have. That's the least of his goodness towards us. How many of you when, you, when you walk in the rain, you think that's God's abundant goodness? Come on, you better begin to enjoy that. I'm singing in the rain. You know, you can do that. So don't make any excuse of not coming to church because of the rain. No, then you missed the point. You didn't enjoy God's abundant goodness. Thank God, you know, in Mumbai, we really don't get to enjoy the full abundance of God's goodness because we only have a few seasons, right? We have rainy season and hot season, and then hotter and humid. If you're in a place that's four seasons, at least you get the full abundance. But nonetheless, I'm, I'm happy with what I get. God, you put us in this place 
we'll enjoy your abundant goodness we will celebrate see celebrate means we rejoice we are happy it's a celebration moment like those of you when your team is winning the world cup match you're celebrating right i don't know what happened last night i heard germany won in the last few moments i couldn't stay awake for that but you, you those of you who whatever your favorite team is right there's some celebration so i i hope we get we are a people as we get to know god that we celebrate just don't say oh don't have a lackluster attitude towards who god is let's celebrate who he is celebrate his goodness that's what david that came deep from within his heart and his soul i want to celebrate you god because you're so great the next thing that makes god truly great is god's great love this is what makes him truly great his great love in 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 psalm 145 8 and 9 david writes the lord is gracious and compassionate slow to anger rich in love that's who he is he's rich in love he's slow to anger he's not a god who's angry all the time he's not having a bad day he's not angry he's rich in love he's gracious he's compassionate he's slow in to anger rich in love the lord is good to all can you say all so if you just walked in here and you thought oh he's only good to the people who attend every nation church you missed it he's good to the your colleague at your workplace he's good to the student who studies with you he's good to the neighbor who lives next to you he's good to all he has compassion on all that he's made because god is great he chooses to have compassion on everybody now imagine if god really didn't love us there'd be no hope where would we be if god didn't love us if god was not gracious and compassionate to us there was no hope for us but i thank god in his greatness he has a great love for everyone you probably heard this scripture it's not there on the slide where god so loved the world he gave his one and only son that whosoever would believe in him would have everlasting life that's the love of god a great god with a great love for the whole world the other reason we know that god is great is because of god's great kingdom in this world there are kingdoms i don't know if you know that or not whether you studied in geography or not there are kingdoms let's take a test i'm not looking at the guys eh? i can't afford them to never mind there's the kingdom of saudi arabia if you never knew that there's the kingdom of bhutan apollo said we are going there they're going to be sending delegates to the conference please register if you want to have a bhutanese friend enjoy the monsoon but register so there's the kingdom of bhutan there's the kingdom of thailand these are all kingdoms but those are not the only kingdoms that exist there are two other real kingdoms one is called the kingdom of satan or the kingdom of darkness and i don't know if you heard about that kingdom or not sometimes we are part of a kingdom and we don't know that we are it's possible so there's the kingdom of satan or kingdom of darkness and there's the kingdom of god which is also known as the kingdom of light it is a kingdom believe me there is a king there's a kingdom So David is praising God for his kingdom. Now if you're part of God's kingdom, then you ought to praise him. If you're a part of that kingdom, then you praise the king. That's what David's doing because he was a part of this kingdom. So he goes on to say in Psalm 145 in verse 10 to 13 he says, "All you have made will praise you, O Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will 
tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Hello? It says they will tell of the glory of your kingdom and they will speak of your might so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. It goes on to say your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is faithful to all his promises and loving towards all he's made. Now if you never understood, you know, you thought, oh, I come to church and you know, this is as good as it gets. No, the church is not the kingdom. The church is part of the kingdom. Hello? You understand that? We don't have a king here. I'm not the king. I'm just the pastor of this church. But we are all part of the kingdom whose king is Jesus. He's the king. So David talking about the kingdom, having a revelation of how great God is, that he has a great kingdom. He says, your kingdom is everlasting. It's not going to end. It's going on forever and ever. And your dominion endures through all generations. Then David goes on to say in, in, the, in the following scriptures from 14 to 16, the Lord upholds all, who, all those who fall and lifts up those who are bowed down. Isn't that good? He's such a king. He upholds all those who fall. I don't want to raise of hands, but I've fallen so many times. And I thank God that he can lift me up in a moment like that. What if you fall and there's nobody to lift you up, but he's not a king who say, oh, just move the fallen person away. He's, he lifts us up. He lifts all who are bowed down. The eyes of all who look to you. And you give them food at the proper time. So imagine, I mean, you think, you know, you, you've cooked up a good meal and you serve it at 8 o'clock and you have dinner every day at 8. But when you look to God, he's giving you better food and at the proper time. He knows when, what you need when you need it. That's how great our God is. That's how great his kingdom is. He says, you open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Come on, are there some living people in this house? God will satisfy your desires. That's what David had this revelation of the greatness of God. He says, you will satisfy the desires of every living thing. Now listen, if you have some desires and they are unmet, how about putting God to the test today? He's a great God. I don't know what your desires, but I'm sure he knows. You maybe you are desiring to get a, get married. That's a great desire. Ask Daniel. Got married recently. It's a great desire. It's accomplished. Now he's looking to the next. I don't know if some of you saw Amy's picture, baby's picture. Apollo just showed me. So cute. I mean, cuteness personified. I can't imagine that she's newborn. Just born last night or whenever. Looks like already a month old or a few days old or what. But that's the thing. God will give you every desire of your heart. Then David goes on to say in the next verse, he says, The Lord is righteous in all his ways. Talking about his great kingdom. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving towards all he's made. Thank God, isn't it? That God is loving towards us. He's not nitpicking and saying, Oh, you know, you're so bad. Look what you did yesterday. You know, you hung out at that bar. You're not supposed to. You did this, you watched that. Oh, no, he's not doing all of that. He's loving towards all he's made. The Lord is near to all who call on him. Better underline that, highlight that. He's near when you call on him. You see, when, like Lynette said, it, you know, say, when, when we are in trouble, are we calling on to God? Or are we trying to fix the problem ourselves? Because that's, the, that's it. Because David had this deep relationship with God, such a love. He knew God so much. That's why he could say, 
that you're near to all who call on him. Listen, David had called on God many, many times. Times when he was down and out. He had called on God. I mean, out of the 150 Psalms, more than 70 have been written by this guy. Such great revelation and understanding he had of who God was. It says he fills the desires of those who fear him. It's not that those who are trembling before him. The fear here means that you love this person so much that God, I, I, don't, I fear that I even could hurt you with how I lived. That's what the fear is. It's a holy fear. It's a loving fear. It's not a trembling fear. Oh, I, I need to hide. No, that's not what he's talking about. He says he fills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and he saves them. So if you're in any kind of situation, cry out to God because he's true to his promise. David's a guy who has experienced all ups and downs. He's experienced God coming up and saving him and pulling him out so many times. That's who our God is. And then he, he wraps up Psalm 145 by saying, The Lord watches over all who love him. Could that be us? The Lord watches over all who love him. But all the wicked will be destroyed. The wicked he will destroy. They don't make any mistake about it. God's a loving God, but he's a just God. He's loving, but he's a God of justice. And then he goes on to say, My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. He starts with praise. He ends with praise. If you, need, if you read another translation, it says, Bless the Lord for who he is. He's so great. Praising and blessing. And I hope that's the kind of relationship that we have. That's the kind of people we are. That we will praise God for who he is. He's a great God. Church, let me remind you, God's kingdom is the only unshakable and everlasting kingdom. Only his kingdom. You may have the passport of any other kingdom. But if you don't have the passport of his kingdom. You really missed it. You better make sure that you have the passport. Of the kingdom. That will last forever. That is crucial. His kingdom. Is an everlasting kingdom. God is great and ultimately everything and everyone will come under his rule and under his reign. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your nationality on earth is, which nation you belong to. It says the nations will become part of his kingdom. Because his is the only kingdom that will stand. A day will come when every knee will bow down. It doesn't matter what their religious belief is, their religious disposition is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who's in the government in India or anywhere else. A day will come. And it's written in the scripture. As surely as I live, in Romans 14, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me and every tongue will confess to God. So then each of us will have to give an account of himself to God. He is the greatest. He is the ultimate. We will have to bow down. It doesn't matter who you are. Where you live doesn't matter. King David, the king of Israel, understood this. One day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess to who God is. In Romans 1.20, I want to show you the scripture. It says, for since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power, 
his divine nature have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made see god has made everything clear so that men are without excuse nobody can go and stand before god and say oh, but i don't know i really didn't i never heard about you listen today it's even even less excuse if wikipedia was not there maybe you know you had stood a chance but today no chance nothing anywhere you go you know, you talk to people who are in intelligent design they'll say everything points to a designer and an architect who holds all things together you want to give him a name he's god he holds all things together since the creation of the world all his qualities all his greatness all his power his divine nature have been understood from what has been made so you can see it's called general revelation god has revealed it to everybody has nothing to do with your religious disposition or what religion you come from or what you think you believe no it has nothing to do with that god has made it clear to everybody because one day we will all stand before him to give an account and i hope that that day you understand that god i belong to your kingdom god has made everything everything in the bible reveals who god is we have just taken a part only in this whole month of june we've just focused on the book of psalms just giving you a picture but if you want to really know who god is get into the bible read the whole word of god it reveals who god is you can know god you can't know god apart from his word so get into that word have a greater revelation of who god is now let me give you some homework if you're the kind who like to do some further study i'll give you two two passages i really love that tell us about who god is you can know him you can read isaiah 40 isaiah 40 really lays out who god is and then you can read isaiah 46 this is a prophet speaking as he got revelation of who god is that we could know god you see why of all of this written is so that we can know god god wants to reveal himself he says he's not playing hide and seek oh i'll just hide now so don't know me no he's a relational god he wants people to know him in isaiah 46 i'll just read a little scripture to you from there it says remember the former things the things you've heard about your grandmother told you about remember the former things those of long ago i am god and there is no other so if you think oh there's many gods multiple gods think again think again because the one who created the greatest is saying i am god and there is no other i am god and there's none like me there's nobody you can compare him to i make known the end from the beginning when god created he already knew the end he didn't start figuring it out along the way it was not like a scientist oh i'll do one experiment and know oh, by the result of this i'll change that and so this experiment and then and then is qed no that's not god he knew the end from the beginning from ancient times what is still to come 
I say my purposes will stand and I will do all that I please. That is our God. He does what he pleases. He has a great plan. He has a great purpose for your life. The reason he maybe brought you here is so that you would know him. That we would know him. That we could fulfill what God has for us.